So a big story that came out uh, today is that Robert Kennedy Jr., RFK, formally announces his 2024 presidential campaign, and he vows to end the corrupt merger of state and corporate power. So this is according to the Daily Wire. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the nephew of late President JFK, on Wednesday formally launched his 2024 Democratic presidential campaign, vowing to, quote, end the merger of state and corporate power. Kennedy is the son of Robert F. Kennedy, a, f- a former U.S. Attorney General and U.S. Senator, uh, assassinated while running for president in 1968. Kennedy teased a 2024 campaign on Twitter last month, asking people to visit his website and contribute. Um, so there's obviously some quotes for this. I have the video, uh, which is really easy to show you guys exactly of him announcing his Dude. presidency. Um, let me pull that up right now. You might have heard a little bit of it there. Uh, but here is that video. Oh, I got to make sure I push the right buttons. Um, here is that video. I've come here today to announce my candidacy for the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. My mission over the next 18 months of this campaign and over my, throughout my presidency will be to end the corrupt merger of state and corporate power that is threatening now. <laughs> is threatening now to impose a new kind of corporate feudalism on our country to commoditize our children, our Purple Mountain's majesty, to poison our our children and our people with with chemicals and pharmaceutical drugs, to strip mine our assets, to hollow out the middle class and keep us in a constant state of war. You know, I actually like a lot of what he has to say there. Um, which means that he will do awful in this primary um, because he's running as a Democrat and he's running very much as a traditional Democrat. Can we also point out um, in that video, I'm going to scroll back. You guys should be able to hear this, but just listen to his voice. Of this campaign and over my, throughout my presidency will be to end. It sounds like he's like struggling to speak even, right? It sounds like he's having issues even like getting the words out. Very different because he's, he's a Kennedy in the race, which everybody, um, is it's a first for a long time, but Kennedy, obviously, back in the 60s, uh, was quite prolific uh, and iconic. And he, his voice specifically, JFK, his voice specifically, and even his family was iconic. And the ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, like that kind of thing, you know? And it was very, very uh, just an iconic voice. And and for RFK alone in this, in this speech, uh, his voice does not sound strong. He sounds weak. It sounds like he's struggling to get the words out. And that's just the start of it. The other thing is he's also anti-vax. You can hear uh, a little bit. I mean, he's framed as anti-vax. I, I think it's probably just the COVID vaccine, maybe. Um, but he also seems to be anti-big pharma, which is a big thing. I've talked a lot about on my radio show, and I'm going to start, obviously, as I've, as I've pumped up my YouTube a little bit more here, uh, start talking about how awful big pharma is. Uh, And it's something Bernie Sanders used to talk about. Actually, it was something I really liked that he used to talk about. But then as soon as the COVID vaccine came in, oh, no, 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 you cannot insult pharmaceutical companies. But it's obvious. And and he makes, and RFK makes a great point, RFK Jr. makes a great point saying that we're poisoning our children. I hope he's also talking about things like Lupron, as I mentioned earlier, the hormone therapy that people give to kids that also is used to chemically castrate sex offenders. Hope he's talking about that. But even if at a minimum he's talking about the awful, like maybe maybe the overprescription. We are the, my generation, Generation Z, is the most heavily medicated generation to alter your brain chemistry because we're also the most mentally ill generation, highest levels of depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, et cetera. And we need to be talking about other solutions than just pop a pill. Keep popping pills so that you're never actually in touch with reality ever. And RFK might actually have a point with all this. And I think it's great for the Democratic Party to have some ideological diversity. But I don't think that this campaign will go too far. As we know with Democrats, 
You can't even be an inch out of line for them to consider you to do anything for their party. You can't even be an inch. Even Bernie Sanders. And I wasn't a big Bernie Sanders fan, but I will admit that the DNC totally screwed him over two elections in the row in a row simply because he would he didn't follow every inch of their platform. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr., very interesting and will be interesting to watch against Biden. That's the biggest thing, too, is this, so he's running against Joe Biden right now. Uh, a lot of times challengers to there are challengers to uh, to incumbents. This happened under Trump. There was Joe Walsh uh, tried to challenge Trump in 2020 as a primary candidate. There was another one that tried to, too. Uh, but incumbents so often, while they might have a challenger that says, like, hey, we need to disrupt the status quo or whatever. There's something they're doing wrong. Uh, oftentimes are not taken seriously. I actually think due to how low. Joe Biden's approval rating is that primary challengers like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson could actually um, could actually like possibly take a lead of some kind. You want to know why I think this is actually so according to this Daily Wire article um, following his announcement, a new national poll from USA Today and Suffolk University surveyed 14 percent of voters who supported Biden in the 2020 presidential election. Uh, that said they could they would cast their vote for Kennedy in 2024. Uh, about 66% said that they would continue supporting Biden. 5% back Marianne Williamson and 13% remained undecided. Now, I didn't necessarily, I got to be honest, I didn't fact check or, or I didn't check uh, what Trump's numbers were. Um, but RFK Jr., I mean, 14% uh, when polling over, I would say actually polling over 10% against an incumbent is pretty remarkable. Um, because that means 10% of people that voted for, or in this case, 14% of people who supported Biden in 2020 would vote for Kennedy instead. And 13% of those are undecided. That means that alone or that there, you I mean, you have 33, one third of people that supported Biden that do not want, that do not want Biden in 2024 are looking for other options. 2024 is heating up, folks, and there's a lot more to cover with it. As you guys can see on my YouTube, you can go check out. I had a video analyzing Tim Scott's announcement um, earlier this week, and we got a lot of people in the race. There's uh, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, Asa Hutchinson from Arkansas, um, and obviously former President Donald Trump. And we're waiting to see possibly Mike Pence, Ron DeSantis enter the race, and I'm very excited to see what happens. Um, but there's a lot more uh Heating up, and I'll always be covering it here on Speechless, everybody. To make sure that you're never missing a moment of that, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, like the video, share it with your friends, whatever. I'd really appreciate that. 